Hello and welcome to Spotlight Games episode 59. I'm your host Patrick. This week we're going to be talking about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it a mess? Does it run? All of those things. None of those things. Also, the creators of God of War Ragnarok, Sony Santa Monica, have their fingers in a bunch of different little pies apparently. So we're going to see what they're working on next. We're going to pontificate, speculate, because, you know, they just released an entire game that they spent years on. So let's just talk about what is next for them. And we're going to do all that and more with my sweet dumpster boy, my co-host, my my man in the chair, Cayman Darty. Cayman, how you doing? <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. Could you, was, could you hear uh, me that time? Yeah, sorry. I, I'm just playing Pokemon right now. So there he is. I'll, I'll, I'll pause this so we can do the show. How about that? Perfect. Uh, I'm doing great, Patrick. Thank you yeah. for having me here. Thank you for obliging my Tuesday needs. I'm is, always here to oblige your needs, whatever this, those needs may be. This you need right now is to catch a goddamn bronzer. <laughs> oh, shit, son. And guess what? Got it. Nailed him. it. Luck and caught that him. son of a bitch. All right, well, I'm We're, done for the night. All right, well, that's our show. Uh, you can follow <laughs> us on... <laughs> Uh, I can't wait to talk about this game. I still not played as much of it as I would have liked, but uh, but we're gonna talk about it. But Cayman, why don't we do a little housekeeping and then we'll jump into the show because we got a lot of video games and stuff to talk about. Because this is the Spotlight Games podcast, where each week we spotlight the latest and the greatest in the world of video games. You can get it by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Spotlight Games Pod because YouTube now has handles, so you can just search for people's handles. Or by searching for Spotlight Games in your favorite podcast app. And hey, you can be on the show by tuning in as we record live Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on twitch.tv slash Spotlight Games Pod. So be sure to follow us there so you're notified when we go live so you can be part of the conversation. You can also follow us on Twitter at Spotlight Games Pod and Instagram and TikTok at Spotlight Games Pod. As you can see, top left of our banner if you're watching here live. Look at that cute little graphic came in. Uh, Look, we got a new episode of Save Trash Cinema, the podcast today. Hit the feeds. What do we talk about? And why was it one of the best movies we've ever covered on Save Trash Cinema? One, you're a liar. Two, your sister messaged me. Uh huh. And Kiki, she messaged me, who Kiki was on the Fast and Furious episode. She messaged me and she goes, uh, Hey, um, why did you do this movie? And why didn't you do Skyscraper from 1996 starring Anna Nicole Smith? All right, Fuck. And I said, well, it's because Patrick and Jeremiah were on the episode together. And do you legitimately think that either one of them would have sat through that movie? And she was like, that is a very fair point. But Absolutely we did address Anna Nicole Smith. It is much better than the movie we watched, which is 2018's skyscraper led by none other than a legless Dwayne the Rock Johnson. This is yep. pre rap career Dwayne the Rock Johnson. It sure is. And, uh, yeah, it's an episode that we did and it exists. Also, and, I would uh, just like to set the record straight. We didn't do this episode because of me. I wasn't even originally going to be on the episode. That is true. This was entire Jer entirely Jeremiah's. Day. I would have been, I would have been way more. I would have been way nicer on the episode if it was <laughs> Jalissa, not you. Um, yeah, probably. Jalissa does. Ne Jalissa has never wronged me. Unlike you and Jeremiah both. So. I wouldn't say bending you over and giving you a spanking is wronging you personally, but I feel like the only way to explain this episode is that I got absolutely fucking railroaded. Also, I was on I was on medications and I trust me, I am not there for half of that episode. Just in a, in a different realm of being. Correct. Apparently. You watch the movie twice and you don't remember a thing. I didn't watch the movie and I don't remember a thing. It's really, it's one of our best episodes, <laughs> honestly. It's <laughs> so good. Honestly, it is one of the funniest episodes I think we've ever done. Yeah. Um, so give it a listen. So funny. Uh, on the feed now. Give it a listen. Let us know. Give it a little subscribe. Uh, Cayman, look, we're, we're a few minutes in. You've already caught a bronzer. Let's talk about what we've been playing because that'll get us one step closer to talking about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Violet, have you been playing anything since last podcast other than Pokemon Scarlet and Violet came in? Yes, I've played God of War. But here's the thing. So I'm on uh, 33 hours into God of War. Okay. And I'm in this massive open area full of exploration, full of side activities. And... um. I'm like, okay, look, here's the thing. 
the game is incredible. The game is, as of this point of me saying this, nothing short of a masterpiece. You should correct so far. However, I don't really feel like there's much I can add to this conversation. Speaking sure. specifically just about God of War, I don't really feel like there's much I can add to the conversation anymore until you beat it, I beat it, because I still haven't beat the game. I yeah, I feel like I'm I'm right there at the end. I feel like I'm probably a few more hours of actual story stuff. Uh, maybe even not that much. It's just this one big open area. I want to like try yeah. to clear anything up I can before we get there. Um, so what I the thing is for me is like I don't feel like I'm. I, there's enough that I like outside of me talking about the ending and like my full final thoughts mm-hmm. that is going to add anything yeah. additional to this conversation. Now you might, but for me, I feel like that spoiler cast that's on the horizon, like that sure is, is that's going to be the the big one for the both of us to yeah. really kind of nail down what we think about this game. Yeah, really, the only things that I want to add, it's like. Two or three things. I want to add that I've, since we last spoke, played about 10 to 15 more hours. So I'm about 20 hours in. Nice. I played a lot this weekend. And um, I I am mostly surprised, Cayman, mm-hmm. at how many times I'm playing this game. And I stop and I open up my phone. I go to my notes app. And I write down something someone said. I write mm-hmm. down like a moment. Or I hit the record button on my PlayStation controller and record the last like three to five minutes because there is just so much incredible storytelling in this game. And so much like top tier writing in this video game that I'm, I, I, I'm so impressed by this game mm-hmm. so far. I agree. Um, only other thing I want to add is I was unfortunately spoiled of something today. Mm. Uh, oh, because no. We're we're at a point now on on the internet because the game's been out for a couple of weeks that people are starting to get a little bold. They're starting to get a little mm, disrespectful. Sure. They're starting to get a little uh, clickbaity. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at you, IGN. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, because they they're I, I don't even want to like describe what I saw. It's nothing like narrative. It's it's more so a gameplay thing that I think. I would have really loved to have uncovered myself when I got there, but uh, yeah, so that that's a little disappointing, but thankfully other than that, I've, I've really not been spoiled of anything. Um, I think I might have an idea of what you're talking about. Cause if it's not a narrative that yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And I'm like, come yeah. on, dude, if I could have seen that firsthand, yeah. not spoiled, that would have been really cool. I, I don't, I know no context around it. Mm-hmm. Like I, I just know that it's a thing. And that's disappointing. Um, also, a friend of the show, Skyler, was texting me earlier. He was like, hey, what are you thinking of God of, Ragnarok, uh, God of War Ragnarok? I'm like, good. I'm not very far yet. He's like, well, I just hit credits two nights ago. I was like, oh, good. So now I can text you and not worry about spoilers in the slightest, uh, which it, it's basically been that way f- from me to you as well. You've not really been able to text me much because you've been yeah. ahead of me most of this time. But I am, I'm just so excited that we're, we're starting to get to the point where we can start talking openly about this video game because I'm excited to, to talk about it. Yeah, I... <sighs> There's a lot of feelings I have. Um, I really am excited to, to, to roll credits on it. Yeah. Um, I, you know, it's interesting. Like I'm in this, like this next open world. Right. And it's like, it's pretty fucking big and there's a lot of stuff to do in it. And like, normally I think at this point in the game, I'd be like, okay, well like this, cause around the same hour mark when playing uh horizon forbidden West, I was like, all right, like, let's wrap it up. I'm sure. done. I'm kind of like, this is getting a little monotonous. Like, but man, like I, I don't want this game to end. Yeah. And so like that's and I just part of it's a part a little bit of a reason for me because like I've been playing Pokemon and I've kind of let Sid take the TV and, and there's a new Dead by Day like killer map and mm-hmm. survivor out this week. So like she's been very excited about that. She's like fucking she's now her level character level is higher than mine. And that's amazing. Like, incredible stuff. Which is not like I have a small like a low character level. Like I'm like she's like almost level 65 at this point. I'm like what the fuck. That's amazing. So like, I don't know. Like I, so I've kind of let her do that and me play Pokemon. But I think a lot of it too is just like I'm. I don't want the game to end. And yeah, I know that once it's over, like 
it's going to be a while before there's potentially anything else. And yeah, which we'll talk about later in the show. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But before we talk about that, Kate, mm, yeah, let's do it. We've been, we're kind of straddling two conversations today God of War and Sony Santa Monica and Game Freak and Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. So let's just dive in to the Paldea region and talk about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I want to start by asking you how many hours roughly you've played and your general overview thoughts, and then I will share the same. So I actually was trying to find that just a, a few minutes ago um, because, you know, on the Switch, it tells you your hours played. Mm-hmm. This it particular... Takes a, it takes like a week for that to show up. Yeah, and it's so stupid. I don't know. I would say... If I had to make a rough estimation, I am probably seven to eight hours in. Okay. That would be my guess. Cause I definitely put in about three hours in on Sunday, definitely put in three hours in yesterday, and probably put a couple hours in today, uh, leading mm-hmm. into recording. Cause I wanted to get more under my belt. Yeah. Cause I have a lot of thoughts, Patrick. Oh, yeah. And uh, I think it, it's okay for me just to go ahead and say this. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll say it just as plain as possible. One, this game is ugly as shit. Ugly as fuck. It is one of the worst looking Pokemon games I don't I think I've ever seen. It straight up looks like a PS2 game. It no, it straight up looks like an iPhone game. Sure. It looks like a mobile game. It's it's I am shocked by this. Two. The game is a bug filled mess. I'm talking texture poppins constantly. Mm-hmm. Shimmer on the screen where there shouldn't be shimmer. There's this like weird thing every once in a while when I go in like a cutscene, especially like the Poke Center, where a white line just appears on the edge of my screen for no reason at all. And it, I have seen that. And I'm before. like, what is like, in, what? in other games too on the Switch? Okay. I think that's a well, Switch thing. Okay, well, this is the first time I've seen it, and it happens every single time. Yeah. But I mean, it's I think it's the game doing something wrong yeah on the and so so there's that and there's like audio pop pims will happen every once in a while there it's just technically this game i've had where my the the pokemon koridon is what they call it, its its name it, it'll just disappear from out from underneath me every once in a while mm-hmm. uh it shudders it shakes there's slow down it is a bug filled mess mm-hmm. and now here's the thing for me i'm like I, that doesn't bother me as much, but we'll get back to that in a second. Yeah. I don't want to get too far into that. Sure, so sure, I want to sure. get to my third point. This is the most fun I've had with a Pokemon game in probably five years. Yeah. So what what would that be? Like the last one, roughly? What the last be? one, I think that I would say that like I legitimately thought was like, this is Pokemon moving in a direction that I always wanted as a kid. And that was Pokemon Sword and, and, Sword and Shield. Okay. And now there were, I had issues with Pokemon Sword and Shield. There was a lot of problems I had with Pokemon Sword and Shield. And I feel like Arceus was a shit ton of fun. But Arceus, I don't think, was a Pokemon game in the same sense of, like, what we think of as a Pokemon game, right? Sure. So I don't really, like, I yes, it is a Pokemon game, but it's not your your typical, like, you have gym leaders, you have, you know, you have all the same things that you have from, like, a normal one. So, like, I don't think I've ever... Like in this situation, like this is the first time I've been like, this is we're getting, we're slowly but surely, just like my back, we're getting we're getting closer okay. to where we're we need to be. There. We're healing. Nature is healing. Um, but yeah, no, this is the most fun, and I would even maybe go even far to say it's like this might be the most fun I've had with a Pokemon game, potentially ever. Not saying that like I didn't enjoy them as kids and and all that stuff. But yeah, like, sure. This is hitting on a level that like i lay in bed like the last since because i got my copy in on sunday uh i've laid in bed for like three hours every night yeah just playing pokemon i've snuck in time on my lunch break to play pokemon Mm -hmm. taking the switch to the bathroom with me to play pokemon like this is where i am where like stuff like arceus i never really i hope you're sanitizing it after yeah of course just a little spritz and spray Mm-hmm. um this is the, like arceus i don't think ever ha- had that happen like me getting this like into a pokemon yeah. game because it's been a while since i've had that and so it's a it's like a tale of two cities yeah it's a double-edged sword because i'm like on one hand holy fuck what happened 
<laughs> right, right. When is the Mac McMuscles, Matt McMuscles episode will happen on Pokemon? Because I'm very curious to know where yeah. the breakdown is. And then on the other hand, how is this game still so much fucking fun, even sure. though being nowhere near what it should be at release? Yeah. Couple things. Terry in the chat. Hey, Terry. Uh, manual save files should show hours log. So if you did want to go look at that, you can That's see. That's um, I've I can de- I can definitively say I've played around ninety minutes to two hours. So I really have not seen a ton of this game. Also, John in the chat. Hey, John, just got here. Came and restart to point one. Better yet, restart the episode. Funny, <laughs> respectfully, no. But uh, <laughs> point one was this game is ugly as shit, and bug. Uh, point two was this is a buggy fucking mess. And that's where I wanted to jump off on my thoughts. So I'm two hours in, like I said, 90 minutes, two hours in. And we've seen online. Everyone's talking about how much of a mess this game is. And I'm already having these issues two hours in. I'm running up a staircase and like this weird orange, like second layer underneath the stairs is like, rising up through the top level of the stairs like these just weird ass things are happening and i i'm sitting here and i'm i'm trying to figure out how the biggest ip in the world came in that is not an opinion that is a fact pokemon is the most uh is the highest selling ip in the world in all of media by like 40 billion dollars is that like is next is mickey mouse in disney how do they keep getting away with this like arceus i loved but it was kind of a buggy mess too and like it not not like this it wasn't like this this is kind of a new level but i feel like so often the conversation around pokemon is it doesn't look very good it Mm. doesn't run super well and it's not animation wise and like graphic wise it's not really ever taking the next step this game a little different because they have taken that next step they've kind of evolved the gameplay formula in that it's truly open world now but Mm -hmm. like how do they keep like nintendo wouldn't ever let a mario game release like this they wouldn't ever let a zelda game release like this does pokemon get away with it simply because it's still going to sell 20 million copies or like how how like why does this keep happening yeah, that's a good that's a good question. I don't huh, that's that's a really good question. I think one of the biggest issues is that so Game Freak makes the mainline Pokemon games. Mm-hmm. Um the remasters are done by uh like a third party developer. I forgot who it is that does it. I was just reading about this. So it's like there's okay. another developer who does like the remasters and stuff. But even going that far, you're normally getting a Pokemon, like a new Pokemon game, pretty much once a year. That's true. So if you look at something like Call of Duty that has three developers or four developers now working on one game, you're still getting that three to four year gap between when their game is going to be released. So I think one of the big things, and this is what I was telling Sid earlier, we were having a conversation on it because she asked me like what I was going to, what we were talking about on the show. And I was like, I think the issue here is this game needed at least six more months. I mean, at, at least. At least six more months. Maybe, it, I, honestly, I think a safe bet would have been a year. But yeah. can you, can you like, if you're a game freak and you're beholden to, by Nintendo to be like, this shit has to be out the door for a holiday season. I mean, season, that's a good point. Don't... Like because like to, it, there, yeah. there's, the, there's the anime, there's the cards, there's the toys. Like, there, it's such a huge... That's a good, yeah. I mean, it, you you delay a game, and all of a sudden, the toys aren't hitting their numbers, the cards aren't hitting their numbers, the anime doesn't like. So I, it's just it's disappointing. Oh no, no, I one hundred percent agree with you. It is yeah. very disappointing that that this is it. Like, but the, I say that right. This is where I feel so torn on this game. Yeah, because like yeah. I say that, like I'm like this is so disappointing. But I cannot fucking put it down. Like, yeah. I am in love with this game. It is it's checking all the boxes for me, right? Yeah, sure. We get our first actual open world Pokemon game. And the traversal is so much fun. Being able just to... And then you're catching all these Pokemon. Like, for the first time, like, in a mainline Pokemon, Pokemon game, like, 
I am actively trying to actually catch everything I can catch. If I see a new Pokemon, I'm stopping right there and we're yeah, I'll re like retool what my lineup is so that I like if I'm way over leveled that like I can hit it with like not effective shit and then try to catch it that so like yeah I'm like really working on like building out my Pokedex and like having a blast doing it. I love the way that they're doing a lot of the stuff in this game. Like I love the way that like it's essentially the story is and Patrick, you might be far enough in this is not a big spoiler. If you oh, you can spoil whatever you need on a Well the, yeah there's no this isn't a spoiler. You're given like essentially when you're done, you, you go to the school. That's your character's thing. Is, is he goes to this Pokemon Academy, and then the big thing about the school is is that you have what they call as a treasure hunt, and the treasure hunt is for the students to go out into the world and explore at their leisure to find their treasure. So one of the characters you meet is like specifically wants to get stronger, wants to battle, and wants to basically go to the Elite Four and take down, you know, go on Victory Road and take down and become the Pokemon champion. Yeah. You have your other character who is like, hey, there's these Titan Pokemon all over the world that are like these monstrous size, and we don't know why, and I want to explore and find out why, and we need to go and fight those and take those down and then find the mystery behind that. And then there's like a third that's like, hey, there's like this shitty organization that's going to attack the school, and we have to stop them before they do that. So you have three branching paths. And then the game, once you leave the school, the game essentially tells you, like, the world is your cloister. That's a Pokemon oh, yeah. reference. I haven't gotten that one yet. The world is your cloister. Fuck off. And that's what you do. You can go and follow either one of these paths. Now, I will say that it's not 100% open world because there's no level... Like, you don't end up in a situation where, like, if you go to one area first and Pokemon in another area will get higher level to match mm. you so you're still kind of level locked in but like you can legitimately just be like no i'm gonna golden path one story and i will level up along my way because the way it's designed can you can do that or you can be like i'll go back and forth which is what i've been doing or like yeah you can just not do anything at all and, and just, just go, go fucking, fucking catch, catch pokemon. pokemon like that yeah. but that's like the freedom that we've never gotten before in a pokemon yeah game. for and like sure. how can you not love that 100%. So, like, outside of the fact that the game looks dated as fuck and it has these bugs. And I think the thing is, if you remove the bugs from it, I'm not that worried about the way it looks. Like, we play, like, one of the best indie, or one of the best, like, indie games this year, the Vampire Survivor or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> looks like, looks like, fuck, like a game that you would like play. Like an Atari. Yes, like, it. So, like, we can't have this argument where we're like, well, the game looks like shit, therefore it's not good. I don't think I can agree to that statement. For sure. I would. Also I think there that. are some times it's a nuance. we could. Yeah, and I think sometimes we can be like, hey, look, if we're playing a game that's supposed to look realistic and it doesn't look realistic, then, like, that's an issue. But, like, yeah. this game definitely is, like, we're not, it's Pokemon. We're not fucking realistic. But, with that being said, outside of the fact that the worlds look shitty... And the environments look shitty. The Pokemon models and the character models have never looked this good before. Like I was like I was in a a, a, a spot where I was trying to catch a hound door, right? Yep. And like I spun because you can spin the camera around in battles now, which is also really fucking cool. To yeah, I do like that. It's so like I spun it around and there's fur on his back, and I'm like, that's never happened before. Sure. So like it's just things like that where like the character models look really good. It's just the game doesn't look good. And I, when you pull it all together, the game does not look good. Yeah, I, I will say I do agree that the character models look good, except I don't really love the character creation. Tools. Yeah, that is there. That is still like there. That's the thing. Like I, I go down this like list of things. And I'm like the character creation is still garbage. Yeah. Uh, the like, how are we still at a point in which there's no voice acting in these games like that? I mean, I, it will always like in my, the way that I kind of gauge games and like be drawn in by them without that, it'll all, there'll always be a barrier for me. Like I can still like, I loved Arceus, honestly, one of my favorite games of this year, but um, it just, I, it's always hard to connect to a game when I'm just reading everything. Yeah. Uh, I want to be pulled in with a performance of an actor or actress or, or whatever. And so that's, 
Like I really wish they would do that. I also like you've played a lot more Pokemon than me. I've I've really only played a handful of the Pokemon games. I really wish they would evolve, no pun intended, their battle system. Like I think it works well and I think I think it it is still objectively fun. Okay. Let me tell you what I think is really cool about this in regards to that statement. Okay, let me finish first. Okay, yes, yeah, sorry. Um okay, like, okay so let me t- sorry. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> like I it, it's always felt the same to me other than like they do like tiny little changes from from the games that I've played like game to game, but it's still like the animations of combat are still nothing. It's just Sprigatito turns around and shakes his ass to do a fucking tail whip. Or and look, if you're ever doing a tail whip in a match, you don't deserve to play. Pokemon. Which then like brings me to another point with the combat system. And then I want to hear what what you're thinking is. There are so many moves in the Pokemon world that I think are just so useless. And like they there have been for years. And it's like we still have so many moves. Like, does anybody do the, the buffing and debuffing moves in Pokemon? Yeah. Like, so can we just cut them. You know, that's a tough one because, yes, they do. Like, there are ways, like, people play the game to be, like, super debuff a character. Like, I don't, I mean, I'm assuming that you can probably, like, there's people who, like, do actual buff, like, buffs as well. Like, for themselves, like, positive buffs for their Pokemon. Yeah. But, like, I've seen before where people do, like, super debuffs and then swap the swap their Pokemon out, take a hit, and then just absolutely drop a hammer. So, like, it is it does work. And, like, those are, like, way more advanced players. And apparently that's sure. way more for, like, uh, like competitive play. Mm, like, that, okay. that feeds into it. It's not just, like, hard best, best move constantly. Like, you know, you can set it up to, to really, like, start to hammer down. And uh, trust me, I've been on the opposing end of that in battles before yeah. with, the, with the computer that have just been like, God damn. Yeah, um, it just it seems like there's, like, a disconnect between the, the gameplay or the, the battle system being really, really simple, where you can get by by just spamming one move on most characters. But then they give you all of this other stuff you can pull from. It's like, but I just don't feel the need to ever pull from it because sure. the game is easy enough that I can just fucking do bite or whatever and like you know what i'm saying but but what are so yeah. i'm criticizing the battle system what are what are, what do you want to bring into that okay so one thing that i noticed that i think is really cool that the way they did is that you don't always have to battle like the only time i really ever like like actively am like okay i need to battle a pokemon is if i'm catching it and so the way sure. that they do it now is there's a new move where if you hit the like the Z R is like the bumper, right? Bumper. It's like the top bumper button. I, I don't know. Yeah. The switch controls are really dumb. Um, you throw your Pokemon out and it will just auto battle. Love that. And so it'll, if, if your Pokemon is stronger and it's like stats match up, it will win. Your Poke, you'll still get experience points. Love I don't think you, you might not get as many experience points. I haven't really messed around with it mm-hmm. enough to find out if you do, but you can essentially auto battle if you knock it down. Then you get crafting materials that now are used to, to craft TMs, which is a really cool thing that, like, I'm really cool. I'm glad that they added it in. Like, I think TM, a lot of complaints people were like, well, TMs, HMs obviously are permanent. You can use them as many times as you want. TMs, you can't. And so it's like people really annoyed by that. That was like, because they did away with it, I think in Arceus maybe, or maybe Sword and Shield, where it's like, they're always permanent, right? The, so like, now you- to characters? Yeah, so now they brought in an element from Arceus where if you, you have to get crafting material from specific Pokemon to be able to craft certain TMs. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. so it like, makes you want to go battle, but you still get them if you do the auto battle system. And then the other one is, is that if you're like trekking down a road or out in the wilderness, just fucking around, you run into a trainer, you're not automatically locked into a battle, which sure. is like one of the biggest issues I've always had was like, you'll get stuck and be like, fuck, all my Pokemon are injured and uh, there's no way I'm going to walk away from this. And then you just get teleported back to Poke, like get back to a Poke Center. You're just like, fuck. So now you actively have to go up to the character, click on them and then instigate a battle. Sure. And they address it through story. Like this is but like, we don't just fight people. <laughs> you yeah. have to actively ask to, to take part in a battle with someone that's fucked up. Yeah. So, like they like address it. I do really simple. love those quality of life improvements. Like it makes yeah. from the little bit that I've played, like I, when I'm running through, I no longer run through an area and 
am forced to fight 15 goal bats. Now yeah. it's like, oh, I already have a goal bat. I'm going to just running past you. Like I'm going to yeah. look for the next thing. So I do really love that for sure. I just yeah. wish that they would make me want to battle more because the battle system has finally felt like it's fresh. Mm, yeah. No, and I, t- I totally understand that. And I can see how that can mess with people. It's still I fun. Think, Don't get me wrong. You know, and I think it, what's cool is like I've been introduced to so many new Pokemon like right yeah. off the bat too. Like they're because it is like front look. I mean, and it might be the whole game. I don't know how many new Pokemon are in this one, but I'm coming up 400 against, total are in it, but I don't know how many of the 400 are new. I'm coming up against, and I'm doing wrong. There might be some that I just don't remember from previous games because they just left a little impact and that's fine too. But like I'm actively battling everything because I'm like, Ooh, like, and then it, and if you battle it once and you haven't like, this is the first time you battled it, it doesn't tell you what it's effective against. Yeah. So then you have to like learn that. And like, yeah. I think that that's also a really cool way to be able to like, kind of be like, Hey, you, you, you want to do this also like, you know, let's, and then there's perks to do. Like if you catch Pokemon, you get, you know, L- league points and, and then actively seeking out other trainers to battle, you get additional league points, which can, which can unlock new TMs that you can use. And so there's a lot of really cool things and elements they put in the game. And so it's like, it just feels like with Pokemon, like I feel the same way coming out of Arceus where I'm like, I feel like we're just, we're getting so close to having like one of the greatest Pokemon games of all time. Like the yeah. gold standard is within reach. But we're just like yeah. whether we're hampered hampered by the fact that like development cycles for these games are so short, or whatever the cause is, like we are just reaching and then just whiffing miserably bad. It's also weird to me because like there, so we've all these quality of life and like things that kind of make it a little quicker and a little more efficient. They've added, but at the same time, they've also taken away some things. Like I don't know if you've noticed this, but in previous Pokemon games, there's a setting where you can get rid of battle animations so that it makes battles go by faster. Because like I don't necessarily need to, especially for like the debuff moves, I don't need to see yeah. this fucking uh, Fido get like make me lose defense and then just the do 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 and like. Especially the the there's this one Pokemon that it'll do like multiple debuffs, and it's like you have, it it takes. This seems like a stupid issue for me to bring up, but it's like it'll take like ten seconds for this move to go, which doesn't sound like a lot of time. But when like they, it just it, these seconds add up, and it like starts to feel like. But in previous games, you could make it to where you could skip that to where it just like this is the move it did, this is what it did to you. Now make your move. That's not in this game, at least that I've been able to find. And there's also like with text, there's not like a quick skip. Mm. Like with usually games with that, like you press like B and it'll show you the whole thing and then you can read it and skip it. This one, like it's just the text is so slow in this game. I'm like, dude, yeah, because I want to th- say that there is an option to speed up the text in the game. Okay. If you go I'll, I'll into look for the that. option settings. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You can do uh, you can go slow, normal and fast. Okay. I need um, to make it fast then because yeah. it's just like the. All both of those things kind of lead me to a, a bigger point that I have, which and you might disagree with me on this. I might get some flack for this opinion, mm-hmm. but the first hour of Pokemon games are fucking awful. Oh, they always are. They're always so bad. And it's like, how are they still so fucking bad? Honestly, like, so for me, I like I've only played an hour and a half, two hours. So my time with this game actually has been mostly very negative, but I can see that it will be a lot more positive once I get past this. It's just like, how are we still like, let me just fucking skip it. You know, I think this is the thing for me in regards to that is like, I don't think that there's ever been a JRPG that does the opening hour correctly. I agree. That's just a trope of JRPGs. And don't get me wrong. I'm not giving them a free pass. Because this has been a long-standing issue, I don't know how we're You're still right. doing this. But like, it is. I it feel is like there are levels more... to it, though. Like, yeah. Pokemon, I feel like is like the worst at it. Like, their opening yeah. hours are so fucking boring, and they take so long, especially when you can't fucking skip the text. And they tell you all these things that they've already told you every other game. And like, I understand they need to, but like, let me at the beginning say like, I'm a seasons Pokemon player. Let Ooh, me skip this shit. I like that idea. Yeah, like, I think honestly, you know, that you're gonna shit on me for saying this. The most egregious jrpg opening persona 5 100 percent. because because for it's persona like i always want to play 15 hours yeah i always i get one i'm always like man you know what i want to do i really want to play persona 5 but i'm like i really don't want to have to sit through 15 hours worth of tutorials before 
Or, yeah. you know, I'm back like moving 100%. Like, yeah, you know what? Maybe this is a conversation for a different day where we Maybe. Like, break down quality of life features for games. Maybe. Because... Jesus Christ. Yeah, I... Yeah, it's it's bad. And like it, I do feel like I'm mostly just talking negatively about this. And I'm sure next week I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna be like, Cayman, I'm obsessed with this game. I just I, I've really only experienced the negative so far, so I can't really speak to the positive other than what I've been hearing from people like you and the internet that it seems like this game, even though it has a bunch of fucking issues, is a lot of fucking fun. So you I'm know, excited Patrick, to keep playing. I think it is interesting that we we talk about this and it's like this year in video games has really been a tale of like two halves. Mm-hmm. It's been like broken, buggy messes that have charm and then masterpieces. Yeah. And it's like, you know, we had this conversation off air where we kind of talked about why and we thought, and it, and that, that's like a probably a topic of show for that is it's a different topic, yeah. But like, I do find it interesting. You got games like Saints Row, which I really enjoyed, minus all the issues. Then you have games like Gotham Knights, which really I felt like was very divisive because it got horrible reviews from critics. Mm-hmm. But then a lot of people were like, "Yeah, look, if you get past the fact that like there's some chugging and slowdown and it feels a bit dated, like there's a lot of heart, like it." So fun game. And then you have stuff like Pokemon where it's the same thing. Or then you turn around and look and you're like, we have Elden Ring. We've got fucking Horizon Forbidden West. We've got God of War Ragnarok. You know, so it's like it really feels like this year has been like. It's been a year of video games. <laughs> the most video really game has. Ass year for video games. I'm, I'm so interested to see like the game awards and see like what because. <laughs> this year is it's been a weird year for sure um and, but i feel like we're gonna just forget because of elden ring and god of war ragnarok we're gonna forget about all the other shit the well, fact like, that there have been over 60 games delayed this year and- yeah what like uh in february so we started the year off with elden ring we're finishing the year off with the god of war so it's like in both games are enough that you can uh, you could probably play god of war until the end of the year and be fine and like elden ring was a fucking experience of like this game can be as short as 20 hours or as long as 450. It's entirely <laughs> up to you. It yeah. depends on how big of a fucking nerd you are. Right. Um, and for me, it was a hundred hours, which is a, I've only done that in a few games. One of those sure. being persona five, because half of persona five is a tutorial. <laughs> God. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to be talking more about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Um, but that's, those are our th- initial thoughts. Let us know what you think. Terry in the chat, he's having a lot of fun with it, even though it's a buggy mess. But let us know what you're thinking of the game. Mail at smilogames.net. We can, maybe we'll read a few next week on air. What? Ooh, this is what Joe thinks. We have no listeners named Joe, but 